single page applications need client side routing. What do I mean by client side routing? It means that you click on a hyperlink or you change the you navigate within the application which changes the URL uh, in your browser and the application state changes which means a new uh, component is shown or new page is shown etc but all of this has to be done without reloading the entire page because if you reload the entire page then that defeats the purpose of single page applications it's no longer a single page application because you just reloaded the page and all of the state is lost so that is why we need client side only routing in uh, single page applications now swelt being a client side as well as server side but uh, ui framework it also needs client side routing you build single page application with swelt so you need client side routing there are some uh, pretty decent uh, routing components for Svelte. There is Swero, there is Svelte Router, there is Routify. But as of this recording, I was not able to make any of them work. They all have some compatibility issues with the current version of uh, Svelte. So that is why I decided to write my own. But keep in mind that I am not using Sapper. I am only using Svelte. If I were using Sapper, Sapper already solves my routing issues. Sapper does a very good job of client-side routing and server-side routing. It, it does that uh, quite beautifully. So in this video, we will write our own router, client-side router in Svelte. And for that, we will use this excellent uh, JavaScript library called page.js. Page.js is a JavaScript library which you can find at visionmedia.com. Sorry, visionmedia.github.io slash page, page.js. There is a pretty good documentation. You should read it. So let's get, and then once we, uh, once we have implemented, we will also look at the difference between using hashbang uh, for routing, for client-side routing versus history.push history state. So hashbang means your page URL will end with a hashbang and slash some path. And while in history.push state, the URL looks much more natural. It'll be myserver.com slash some path foo slash bar, etc. Et and no hash bang. So that is more natural. It's uh, but it is a, it needs a little bit of cooperation from the server. So we will take a look at that. Let's get started. So here's my uh, Visual Studio code on the left and my browser on the right. Uh, first thing we will do is start a Svelte project, which as usual, we will run, start with npx dgit uh, svelte.js slash template. And the name of our project Svelte, let's say Svelte routing. Okay, let's do that. All right, so it's been cloned. Let's open the project. Uh, Svelte. Okay, where did I create this, hold on, something is not right. I might have created it in the wrong place, let me check. Yes, I did. So let me move my Svelte routing project into dev Svelte. All right, so let's open it again. There it is, Svelte routing. So now we will jump back into the shell and run npm install. Okay, and we can run npm run dev by simply, you can either run it like this, npm run dev, or I don't like to do that. I like to do it this way where I use VS code to run it for us. Okay, now that this is running, we just reload our browser on the right and we got the quintessential Svelte starter project. Okay, now we will get rid of some of the extra stuff that is in there. Uh, let's go into app, where is the app? SRC app that's Svelte. And let's get rid of everything. I mean, I don't want to keep anything. 
Okay. And in my main.js, I don't, I mean, this thing is not super useful. Okay. Back here, I will simply say hello. Save. And there you have hello. Great. So now let's create a bunch of links. Okay. So let's create a bunch of links by saying ul lia and that creates a link. Uh, let's first one being our home page. So think of it as if this was a nav bar. The second one is some path within our application foo and the link will be named foo and third one is yet another one called bar. The link is also named bar. Save this and we got these links. Now if I actually click on these, uh, they, they are not doing anything. I mean, clicking on it basically changes the URL bar, but there is no real change in the application. So that's fine. Um, what we could do is we could now import page.js. And the one thing that I want you to see is, hold on, let's go to inspect and go to network tab, the Chrome developer tools net, network tab. As you can see, every time we click on these things, it's actually uh, generating network requests. Let me, it's not, it's hard to see right now, but me... yeah, here. So every time I'm clicking on, on these, this is a full page reload. The, so that's clearly not a single page application. It's actually causing a full page reload. So that's not what we mean by single page application. So this is what we are going to solve with page.js. So let's uh, bring page.js into the project. npm install minus minus save page.js this will add page.js to our project so now package.json actually has page.js as a dependency which means you can now in my app.12 we can add a script tag and bring in import page from page.js So what we can do now is create these routes, slash, slash foo, slash bar. All right, so let's create those. So the way we do that, and again, you can look at the documentation of page.js on this page. Um, let me just show it to you. Hopefully you can read that. So go, go to that page and you will be able to see um, the documentation. But you set up routes by saying page, the route name, slash in this case, right? And some kind of a handler. The handler takes the two parameters context and context and the next handler. Okay. And that next, um, so, and this is a lambda function or, a, or some kind of a callback function. And you can, you know, do things with these two. So I'm going to create a generic uh, handler. So let's say function navigate, let's say. And it takes context and next handler in the chain. And we will simply print console.log navigating, navigating to and uh, Let's use this interpolated string navigating to then c dollar sign ctx dot path. So this way we can use the same navigation handler for everything. Navigate. Alright, so this is first. Second one is similar, we just change the path to full 
and just for experimentation we are not creating uh, a handler for bar okay like right let's save this and uh, take a look at our okay so here let me press enter a few times so that i can see changes in the route so pay attention to console we hit home didn't say anything and click on this one it is still causing full reload full page reloads yes so that why is that happening well it's happening because we never in a started page handler so you have to say page dot start in order to make this work so let's uh, reload this and now clear the network tab and look at the console tab also home navigating to flash blue foo navigating to food and bar it causes a reload why I'll, I'll tell you in a second so let's go to home again home works foo works and bar will cause a full reload because that is that is the route we have not set up yet at all so in order to um, to handle that scenario where a, a route has not been set up, what we should do is we should create a, a catch-all route. Stop. Right? And then when that happens, we will simply say not found. Okay. Console. So let's just print not found. Console dot log not found. Sorry. No. Not found. Okay. So as you can see, there is some, <laughs> when you try, uh, whenever, when you're inside the application, clicking around slash foo is not a problem. But when you reload the page, slash foo is a problem. And that's a problem we will solve in a second. Let's first see that our, our catch-all not found is working. It's navigating to slash, clicking on foo, says navigating to foo, clicking on bar, says not found. So this is the correct behavior. But again, as I was saying, uh, if I reload either foo or bar, hard reload, and now this is not good. Why is this not working? Well, there are two ways to fix this. One way is to stop using uh, full routes like this and history dot push state, which is what it, it, uh, page dot start is using by default. So uh, if we start using hash banks. If we start using hash banks, this problem will be solved. So let me show you. You just give page or start you can take options. The option is hash bang true. So once you set hash bang equal to true and save this, we'll see uh, the application behavior will change a bit. Clicking on foo, even though foo is linked to slash foo, clicking on it doesn't take you to slash foo, it takes you to slash hash bang slash foo. Clicking on bar takes you to slash hash bank slash bar and like that. So this is the hash bank behavior. Now at this point, if you even if you reload, it doesn't break because you are not going anywhere but index.html. The server knows about index.html, slash is mapped to index.html, but then the hash bank is not handled by the server, that is handled by on the client side by page dots js and it does the right thing so all the requests are going to page uh, to index.html uh, and then page.js in the client side now this is obviously not the best looking uh, url so if you really wanted hash bank to be false right then you have a different problem so let's make it false and now you are back to the same same old issue where the urls look nice but reload will fail like this so how do you get around that problem well there is a simple solution going to package.json um, swelt uh, application in this scenario is being served by this sirv serve um, server so all you have to do is just tell that you are running in single page application mode single page app mode so let's uh, 
do that, we have to restart the dev server. So when you when you give this minus minus single, let's see. Now, it every time you send it a request to, for example, foo, for example, and it doesn't have a page called foo, it will still serve slash route, which is the index.html. Now, if I reload, no failures. Look, this is working. All you had to do was run SIRV serve in single page application mode, SPA mode. Okay. So that solves that problem. Okay, so, so far we have been playing, we had been playing with only um, page.js directly. We are not uh, using it in a way that is conducive to Swell. So in order to fix that, uh, let's create two components. One called router, that's well, and another called route, that's well. Okay, so these will be our two components. What we will do is we'll move all of this stuff to router and route. Let's get rid of all this. This is route.swelt. You go to so router.swelt. Enter a script tag and paste everything that we were doing in the app. So now we don't need script. We will instantiate router and route. So we do need script actually, but only to import. Import router from dot slash router dot swell and import route from route dot swell slash okay. Alright, so once we do this, we can now instantiate angle bracket route router, sorry, and in that router we set create routes. So let's say route where path is oops, path is equal to slash hmm, somehow it just keeps coming uh, let me see path equal to slash and what we will do is we, whatever we want to show at slash uh, path should be here as a child so we will say uh, this is home page. Similarly, um, we will create another route called slash foo and we will call this this is foo page. So these two are routes. Of course this thing is not going to work yet. In in the route routers a component we will simply display whatever ch child content was, was given, which means slot. So, this is the child. Com it simply displays whatever ch children were passed, passed in, which is these children, right? And then route does pretty much the same thing. It displays its children. Okay. Oops. This is slot. Okay, save it. So <laughs> the problem is it's showing all the routes at the same time, all at once. Okay, so that's a problem that, that doesn't help anybody. It's showing all the routes because there is no con conditionality, right? So of course we have to add conditions around and uh, in the route. We should display a route only when it is the active route. So we say if the current path is, but before we do all of those things, let's create props. So create a script tag and create a prop, prop, prop called export let path. And uh, there will be a current path. And if the current path matches path, then only show the slot. 
So in order to do those things, we have to share data between the router, the parent, and route, the child. So there are two ways to share data. One is, uh, well, several ways really. You could also pass in properties, etc. But the way we are going to do it is we are going to uh, use context and uh, stores. Context is ideal for sharing data between parent and child. And store is ideal for sharing data on disparate elements and different components, but more importantly, data that is changing dynamically and you want to react to those changes. So let's import both of those things. In router, we say import um, set context from swell. Okay. And similarly in route, we do the opposite, which is we import get context from swell. Then we create a context set context. We will set a current path store. Okay. Obviously it doesn't exist, so we have to make it exist. So what are we trying to do? We are creating a store and we will pass that store. So let me, so how do you create a store? You create a writable store by calling, by importing writable from swell store. Okay, now let's create const current path equal to writable. And the starting value of this store is going to be slash because that makes sense, right? The starting route should be slash. And then we take that store, we set it in context under the name current underscore path. And so and then we in route, we, we can get that by calling saying const current underscore path equal to get context current underscore path. Okay. So this this will start to make sense in a, in a minute. So now this current path needs to be updated in router or and we need to react to that in route. So let's see how we do that. Uh, we can just say every time somebody clicks on a valid route, right? Just set the current path. So we, we can just say dollar current path equal to ctx dot path so this way now, now why are we doing dollar sign and not simply current path because this is how stores work in swell you put a dollar sign it's a reactive assignment and dollar sign is same as calling current path dot set so that's what we are going to do um, so now it sets the path we come back here and we can say, hey, react to this. I mean, show this lot only if the components path is equal to dollar sign current path. Now, when this is again, when you re receive a value from, when you put a dollar sign in front of a store name, you are retrieving its value when it is on the right hand side. So this is no need to do subscribe. Let's close if, let's see if this works at all. So here, this is showing full home. This is home page. This is full page. That's great, isn't it? Nice. Only problem with this is that, and then of course, if you go to bar, it stays on home. That's a problem. We'll fix that. But the other problem is that we are setting the routes here in router. Now, how do we know in router ahead of time that these will be the routes? So this doesn't make sense. The right thing would be to move the this in the routes. As we are setting up the routes, slash and foo, the route component should, should register these routes. So in order to do that, what we do, we basically import page. Just like router has imported page, we will import the same thing in route. Okay, and then we say, when we instantiate this component, 
register the route. How do you do that? You take call the page API, register path as the route, and then how should we react to it? Uh, I guess pretty simple. Just give a callback. The callback simply says that the current path is equal to path, which means this this route's path should be assigned to current path. Okay, so this way we don't have to hard code these routes. Okay, and now we can delete this. Let's see if this works. Okay, so bar is not found, home is found. Home is not found, nothing is found. They're all not found. As you can see, this is showing not found here. It's showing home page simply because it, and that is the default. But it also keeps saying foo is not found, home page is not found, nothing is found. Why is that? Okay, so the answer is because we are uh, initializing page.start is being called too soon. Remember page.start is being called when you instantiate router, which is probably here, right? But then you are already calling page API start, and then later you are setting your instantiating routes inside that. By that time it's too late. You have already started the page.js API and registering routes at that point doesn't help much. So what we have to do is delay. Somehow delay this code until the point when routes have already been instantiated and mounted. To do that, we can use after update. So we just add after update, we import that from Svelte API and call after update and as a callback as a callback we set up these two routes there is one issue though this will this callback will be called every time router is updated that's a bit too much we want to do this only the first time first time is good enough so, how do we handle that? We simply create a new vari a variable called uh, uh, started. It's false in the beginning. Then we check if not started, then first, and then, then do these things, which is setting up the catch all and finally starting the page API. But of course, Make sure started variable is set to true before you do anything so that this thing keep, doesn't keep happening every time because next time, second time around and not started will be false because started is true. So this is how we make sure we, we don't call, keep calling this again and again. Let's save this and see if this improves the behavior of the application. Home is home, foo is being called. Yes, this is foo, yeah, this is working now. You click on home, you say this is home page, which means the this slot is being rendered when you click home, and this slot is being rendered when you click foo, right? But when you click bar, it says not, not found in the log, console log, but it doesn't remove the foo component or foo slot, that's a problem. So how do we handle that? Not too hard, all we have to do is update the current path. So in this catch all, we just have to put curly braces around this because we are going to do two statement, not one. We will set, say dollar sign current path equal to whatever the new path is. But what is the new path? We don't know. Well, we do know if we there is a, an argument passed, which is the context, and context path is the path that was not found. This is the catch-all path. So, if I now save this, you see not found here, and you don't see any slot being rendered. You click on foo, 
who gets rendered? You click on home, home gets rendered. You can click on bar, nothing gets rendered. And you get a console log. Also, when you go to network activity tab, you click around, there are no, there is no page reloading happening. The pages not, are not getting reloaded, which is good. And over here, you will see also, there is no, the server is not seeing any requests. You see, we are clicking around, the routes are changing, and uh, the components being rendered are also changing, but no requests here. This is exactly what we wanted. This is the single page app behavior. And because we have uh, the server running in SPM mode, uh, you know, even hard reload does not break the application. See, hard reload does not break the application. So great. So this is an example of using, of writing your own router. Now there is more advanced use cases uh, where you are actually, um, you know, rendering components inside, which you can still do, uh, but you could be um, passing in uh, parameters to those components, the page, uh, the paths could have path parameters. All those are slightly more advanced use cases. We can handle that in a future video. But here you learned how to use page.js for your client-side routing, how to register routes, right? how to use either the Hashbang API or not. Uh, oh, by the way, I forgot that I should make this Hashbang a parameter. So let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, let me, in the router, we will add a we will add a um, a prop export let hash bang is false by default okay. and then we will use that value of hash bank. So hash bank colon hash bank. But that's not needed. You can just you can simply call it say hash bank and it takes the local variables value. So okay. So now in your app you can pass in when creating the router you can say hash bank. equal to true or false. Let's say true because default is false. So we are changing it to true. And now when we click around, you see how it's using hash bangs instead of uh, full natural routes. You change this back to false or you omit this thing altogether. And now it's back to natural routes. So this is how we are, we just parameterized hash bank behavior. So I hope you uh, learned something. We used context to pass, set context to pass in a, uh, an object to the children, right? Um, and the get context to retrieve that object from the parent in the child, and but the object that we are passing around is a store, which means we can update, reactively update the value and react to those changes, um, you know, reactively. Right? So this is the beauty of Swell stores. Hope you learned something. Stay curious.